slowly walk back and forth, but we will start because many of you were here on time. So thank you for that. Um, and thank you very much for being here today and joining us. My name is Tanya Zakharchenko. I'm a postdoctoral fellow here at the University of Oslo in Department of Literature, Area Studies and European Languages, which conveniently shortens to ELOS in Norwegian, so in ELOS. And my co-moderator today is Arve Hansen, my colleague from the University of Tromsø, where he's a PhD student. So we are very glad today to welcome Yuri Androkovich to Oslo. Pana Yuri, thank you for being with us. Um, thank you. <laughs> Uh, some of you may remember that last year we hosted four Ukrainian writers from Kharkiv here in Oslo as part of the National Science Week. Sergei Zhadan, Oleg Kozarev, Andriy Krasnyashik, and um, Yuri Tsaplin. And so today we continue talking Ukraine in Norway with a writer and public intellectual who needs very little introduction, I'm sure, for most of you. But because of the nature of this event, I will still offer an introduction. Yuri Androkhovich was born in Ivano-Frankivsk, which was previously known as Stanislaviv. And from this native name Stanislaviv came what literary critics later called the Stanislav phenomenon, yeah, which refers to, um, to writers working in the region, in the city. And um, he has published now six novels, because the new one is out, Kohansi Justitsi. A very, very fresh. Very fresh. <laughs> Literally just very out. Fresh. Lovers of Justice, maybe, to translate it? Lovers of Justice. Lovers of Justice. Right. Mm -hmm. So six novels now, a number of poetry collections, short stories, several volumes of essays, and one of them has just also freshly, last week, came out in English, and we'll still come back to it. It was just arrived from Canada, my final territory. Um, but he's also known for his work as a serious translator, Hamlet, Romeo and Juliet, uh, into Ukrainian as well as a number of works by, by the New York School of Poets. And some of you may also know his name in connection with Bubabu, yeah, Bubabu, Bufanada, Balahan, Burlesque, which has now become legendary as the first postmodern literary group in Ukraine, which he co-founded with two other colleagues, and uh, which, thanks to which um, they are now credited with having renewed the Ukrainian literary scene in the 1980s due to this postmodern introduction of the fresh air of postmodernism. So I still hope he will tell us about Kohansi Justitsi today, but as far as novels go, um, I must mention for those of you who don't know, most do surely, his second novel, Moscoviada, published in 93, uh, because I think it's, uh, it's quite absolutely decisive for a whole circle of people in Ukraine who have uh, told me that uh, Moscoviada ha has helped them find a certain answer to post-imperial or post-colonial or Soviet questions that they were struggling with. There are some people in Ukraine who found answers in Moscoviada, which is, so is very definitive. Is there any answer? <laughs> they perhaps found a way to formulate questions better. Um, and it is available in English as the Moscoviet, thanks to the effort of our friend and colleague Vitaly Chernetsky. So, um, finally, on top of all of this, uh, Yuri Androkhovich is also actively engaged with commentary on current affairs. As many of you know, he actively gives interviews, and people react to these interviews. People engage with them, people write something else in response. So it's kind of an active, ongoing scene, and we're pleased to be part of it. Um, thank you for opening it. <laughs> So the way we'll proceed now is that Arve and I have both, both asked a couple of questions. Maybe we solve this is problem. This, is this complex? You need to press two buttons at the same time, <laughs> just to keep you awake. <laughs> there. So we'll both, we will both start with Arvo with a couple of questions to get us going to break the ice, and then we hope that you will join us with your comments and or questions. So let us break the ice and get going. The first question is um, referring to what many people think of as the Ukrainian or Eastern European literature centr centricity, yeah? literatura centrism, uh, a situation in which writers and literature has a really definitive role in a culture, 
more than in most Western cultures, perhaps we could say, where texts fill in this vacuum with a struggling society on the top. And then the role of a writer becomes a thing, almost like an oracle-like thing, perhaps, or not. Tell us about that. Tell us about the role of a writer, and is there pressure or responsibility, or neither? And does it change because of the war? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for invitation. And uh, uh, I'm very sorry for not speaking Norwegian. Uh, <laughs> I, I would like to, uh, to, to do it. Uh, uh, Although this is my uh, very first time in, in uh, Norway and in Oslo. Uh, and я також хотів би і українською говорити, але ми, напевно, перенесемо це трошки на пізніше. I would like to, to speak in Ukrainian too, but uh, I'll do it uh, a little bit later. And, uh, so we just agreed, uh, we organized this meeting in the way uh, that this uh, first part uh, should be uh, in English. Uh, and now, uh, as to your question, Tanya, uh, about the role of the writer mm, in Ukraine. I think uh, we cannot fix uh, some stable uh, approach, some stable uh, attitude uh, to this um, phenomenon. I, I, I'm quite, uh, I, would, I would say, I'm quite old <laughs> as a writer, uh, because I started uh, uh, publishing my texts, some of my poems, uh, in uh, early 80s. It was the Soviet time. 1980s. The very first publication uh, was in uh, 82. And we uh, founded our uh, group Bubabu in 85. So actually uh, it is a quite long period of time uh, inside of which I am a writer. And uh, I always could note some uh, changes in, 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 in that problematics you are asking about. Uh, there was a time uh, each of us, of Buba Beasts, let's say, at the end of the 80s, uh, felt uh, himself uh, being very and very important. It was a kind of uh, mm, poetic performance, poetic show, and uh, it was a, uh, quite uh, mm, uh, full of, uh, uh, of of political meanings, political jokes, uh, and so on. And uh, we decided. Uh, we are now uh, still young poets, we are like 29, 30 years old, 30 years old poets, and uh, we can be a kind of uh, uh, leaders for that society. And then the period came uh, after Ukraine uh, became independent, uh, it was uh, the, the first half of 90s, a period of decline. I would say of uh, decline of cultural life, uh, of publishings, uh, uh, quite dead period of time. And nobody was very interested in, in some uh, poetic performances or something. So it, it was the second wave, let's say, uh, which uh, has lasted, I, I would say, uh, till the end of 90s. So I stopped at that time writing poetry and 
I concentrated myself on, on, uh, on my novels. The three novels, uh, Recreations, Moscoviat and Perversion, have been written uh, at that time, in 90s. Uh, I wasn't very, very active and very much asked uh, to, uh, to be engaged politically, because there was a kind of vacuum, you mentioned it. And, uh, and then the new period of, of uh, Ukrainian history was actually the year of 2000 and 2001. If you remember uh, the situation with the, uh, the captivating of uh, Georgi Gongadze, uh, first of all, the disappearance of, of this journalist, uh, which was very critical uh, concerning uh, uh, Ukrainian president and uh, Ukrainian system of state power at that time, and he disappeared, and then uh, the body, the body without a head, beheaded, um, uh, has been found in a forest. Uh, the, so I, I uh, devote to, to many details to this situation, but it was like uh, mm, the second awakening of Ukrainian society. Mm. It was a very important uh, case in uh, our history because uh, we all speak about uh, Orange Revolution as the first stage of uh, a new Ukrainian society, but it was a little bit earlier. It was a uh, so-called Gongadze Gate at the beginning of of, uh, uh, of the new new century and uh, 2001 uh, was the year of the biggest uh, uh, mass protests in in Kiev and it was somehow a new a new challenge uh, for many of us I mean Ukrainian writers. It was a time to say, okay, we played enough good before, uh, and we joked, and uh, we were uh, very destructive, uh, but uh, probably uh, we have to be a little bit more serious and responsible. And we have to, uh, to react and to command uh, some social things. So I mentioned uh, the Orange Revolution and it was the, the, the blossoming of, of uh, this uh, uh, this creativity uh, and uh, it was a time where many of my colleagues, many of Ukrainian writers uh, have been engaged again. And then, of course, uh, the second Maidan, the last one. Uh, I can remember that uh, we had some, uh, some stage, so, so to speak, on the backstage of the main uh, Maidan stage. Mm -hmm. There was a free university of Maidan, if you remember. And it was like, uh, without any break, uh, day and night, 24 hours, uh, lectures, readings, uh, they projected some, some uh, documentaries, some movies, uh, all the time, all the time. And very many people uh, were engaged into uh, in, in, into this uh, university program. Mm. Of course, it was an unofficial university, but uh, it was one of the signs that uh, there is a huge need uh, in society to listen uh, to the people of art. So the second location mm, on Maidan was uh, Mestetsky Barbakan, mm -hmm. Barbakan of Arts, and it, 
it was again it was it was a, a very important occasion because it was a constant dialogue uh, between artists and common protesters common Absolutely. participants of uh, protests uh, and then of course the situation of uh, war and uh, I can say we, we are inside of this situation I, I don't have some uh, perspective uh, of being there bec because uh, it is uh, still in it is still topical uh, but of course uh, you mentioned some uh, attentiveness uh, uh, and reactions of uh, each word which has been written they are extremely sensitive and uh, this is a kind of, of uh, uh, new sensibility which is uh, very very traumatized you mean this public commentary yes of course and and reactions mm. because uh, the commentaries are uh, just uh, one of, of reactions you can uh, meet and experience but you can also just uh, meet the, the living people and have some struggle with fighting with them, because uh, all of us we are we are nowadays uh, in actually in a pain. We live with this pain, and uh, and here comes the question: uh, Should the writer uh, uh, yeah should the writer be careful and? Mm. Uh, uh, use uh, some kind of, of inner censorship mm -hmm. uh, to free uh, the texts of uh, each kind of provocation uh, I don't know, irony, humor or is it still, uh, still important uh, to be absolutely free in, in the writing mm -hmm. and Mm, actually, uh, I'm uh, uh, for the second version. Uh, I, I don't think uh, the censorship could be a positive and useful approach, uh, even in that situation. Especially the censorship which is produced by, uh, by myself. Mm -hmm. But uh, at the same time, um, you, you can feel uh, there is there is no book, there is no novel, there is no poem, long poem, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, provoked some scandal or big discussion. In a way, mm -hmm. it is always uh, about about uh, single publication on Facebook single headline in newspaper and uh, I suspect there is there is some interesting uh, contradiction so actually uh, the scandals uh, are probably uh, made not uh, not from the side of, of real readers hmm. uh, by people who, who really uh, who are really interested by, by uh, newest books. They just uh, follow uh, some posts in internet, some interviews, some short columns, blogs, uh, and uh, I don't like this situation. <laughs> I, I, I think the scandals are actually productive, can be productive, but uh, not in, in, in that case uh, where uh, the books uh, they remain uh, without uh, this attention. living reaction attention. 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 Yeah.
Excuse me, can we open it with the two open? Yes, does Please. somebody know what to press, Yerusha? You, you press something there, I'm sorry. Okay. I wouldn't mind to go every, every time, but disturb Yeah, you. no, of course. Yeah, closure. it's better to <laughs> leave the door open. It should be open now. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you can, yeah, you can make it. <laughs> 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 Would you like to take over? Yes, I'll, I think I'll start with my second question. Uh, because you were saying that an author should not have an inner censorship. And it's better uh, not to have. It's better not to have. Mm. Uh, but then again, you've been... Um, uh, very much involved in uh, uh, satire and humor from the 1980s, as mm -hmm. far as I understand, and, mm -hmm. and you've been a person interested in this uh, kind of uh, uh, humor in uh, Ukrainian uh, literature since. And when there's a war going on between uh, pro-Russian separatists and Ukrainians, many of whom are not only Ukrainian speaking, but also Russian speaking. Um, when you are talking about Russian language as, I know, and I know this is just a quote, um, taken out of context perhaps, but you call Russian language a language of criminal slang, plata, and uh, uh, Pavlopoksy. Pavlopoksy. Um, uh, pop music. So, how would you um, address that question? Is it oh, how how much could you uh, satirize um, mm -hmm. Russian language in such a conflict? Uh, so, uh, about uh, first of all about this uh, quotation, yes. because uh, it comes from uh, from a quite quite ancient times, it was 2004, mm -hmm. and uh, it was an open letter uh, supporting uh, the, the oppositional candidate Viktor Yushchenko mm -hmm. at the presidential elections in Ukraine. And uh, this point uh, about, so you say Russian language, but in my text there is not Russian. It is against the other candidate, Yanukovych, mm -hmm. who promised uh, to do Russian as an official language of the country. Mm -hmm. And in my texts, there is a, a play with uh, Yanukovych style of Russian language. <laughs> so this is his personal version of Russian language. Uh, and he, as a criminal, uh, has just this form of, of Russian language. So I, I just tried to, in, in that very short form of uh, open letter with, with many points there, because it was one of the of, of uh, 20 points in that open letter uh, but I tried uh, to, uh, uh, to to play with this Yanukovych discourse uh, with this model of Russian speaking which is first of all uh, against the, the, the quality the, the good Russian language uh, but it, it is just uh, to this case, uh, but you asked something which is uh, in, in more wider context. And uh, the question about, about uh, humor or would, parody. Would it be appropriate to make such points now mm -hmm. in a time where mm -hmm. this uh, might promote uh, more uh, to reach a model of Ukraine, East versus West, mm -hmm. um, because it might be perceived as this is the West talking down 
its Russian cultural heritage of Ukraine, or mm -hmm. if you mm -hmm. see mm -hmm. where I'm getting at. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, the, uh, too, too many, uh, uh, too many topics. Actually, <laughs> uh, Russian cultural heritage is something uh, which uh, uh, we we can uh, we can uh, consider it a little bit later. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, in that case, uh, uh, we are somewhere in in the war. Mm, uh, may we, uh, or how can we understand uh, writers' responsibility at that time? I, I would answer about this point first of all. Um, I, I think we, uh, if we uh, allow mm, uh, that writer. Uh, speaks in in that time, speaks all the time, just uh, very serious and uh, exclusively uh, serious. Uh, we risk uh, uh, to to do a war uh, to some pathetic thing, and uh, I'm against that. We have to laugh about to. Uh, in, in, in different case, we, we didn't have such, uh, we, we wouldn't have such, such novels as Bravi Soldat Schweik, Hashika, or maybe uh, Vonnegut's novels. Slaughterhouse-Five. Yeah, or uh, Joe Heller. Uh, we have to make love of, of war. Uh, uh, otherwise, it can be very dangerous thing. The war can be sacralized by this seriousness and by by uh, pathetics. So I would say, um, of course, there is always the question of, of the talent and uh, the feeling where the humor uh, is uh, really good. This is the, the, the question of, of uh, taste, of course, and uh, I would say uh, there is no, there can be no restriction uh, for the writers. Just be serious, uh, because because uh, uh, we have a war. Yeah. And mm -hmm. please feel free to raise your hand if you would like to join us. Just saying, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or comment. But uh, as I said, uh, there is this very special uh, sensibility. Uh, there is, uh, you, you can call it uh, open wound. And uh, uh, of course, uh, there is a, a different nature of, of, of jokes. Mm -hmm. Let's call it jokes. A different. Uh, humoristic uh, approaches and, and uh, the possibilities to use some, uh, uh, they call it strategies in, in writing. Mm. Uh, and and uh, I'm back to this idea, it just it depends on, on, on the talent. Mm. And probably a part of this talent can be responsibility, some feeling of uh, there is my inner boundary, my, my inner border, uh, what I say, without any taboo. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. It's of course uh, always the question of uh, practical uh, text, of uh, some passage, some excerpt, and uh, being in, in, inside of, of this theory, uh, we are always uh, not, not in the right uh, situation. Yeah. Let me jump in. Do we have any comments or shall I ask what I meant to ask? Not yet. Okay, Arvin mentioned quickly this, uh, already brought up the idea of, of the two Ukraines model, which mm -hmm. is controversial and difficult. Unfortunately, it's still out there and we deal with it. And I wanted to ask you to clarify a little bit your stance on it based on, let's say, two to, to 
quick but important quotes. One is from this new book translated into English from 2014. This is very quick. Uh, this is Yuri Androkhovich writing in English. In all those interviews I gave in Western media, I repeated whenever I could, it's not true that people have risen only in Kiev and in the West, but in Kharkiv, in Donetsk, in Zaporizhia too, and even in Simferopol. Yes, there are fewer of them there, but that shows their courage as even more commendable. So kind of a, uh, an anti-division, perhaps, quote, if we had to simplify it. And uh, that same year, and I'm sure you've heard already about this interview, but that same year on Kolta, um, you said, and actually, from the end, they took it to the front. Nasza cel swobodna europejska strana z Donbasem niedostrzyma. How do we combine these two things? Does East end somewhere, or? First of all, uh, I'm just uh, writing a writer. <laughs> I'm not a politician uh, uh, who does uh, just one statement all his life. Uh, I, mm, I change myself and I change my reactions, especially uh, uh, giving some interviews mm -hmm. uh, where I don't have the possibility uh, to ponder uh, and to be more careful. But in that uh, example, uh, mm -hmm. there is also some objective uh, reason uh, the first quotation in English this one yes mm -hmm. it, it was uh, it comes from the text written uh, in March 2014 and uh, it was just the, the first uh, yeah first weeks after uh, the end of Maidan and the beginning of uh, uh, Russian invasion on Crimea mm -hmm. and it was the mo most important message uh, for the entire country it was Yedina Kraina, Yedina Strana. In that moment uh, I, I uh, got the many many uh, uh, requests uh, from Western media to command the situation. And I felt uh, the Westerners are uh, in that moment exaggerated uh, this uh, situation with two different Ukraines. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was very important uh, to be very categorical in that moment mm -hmm. and to say, no, there is actually no difference. The people in all the parts of the country uh, are supporting this European uh, striving of the country. And uh, yes, I kept silence about uh, some, uh, some numbers of, of this movement. If we compare, uh, sometimes it was a million people in Kiev and let's say uh, 2000 in Kharkiv. Mm -hmm. But the, the main point was uh, in all the regions, everywhere in Ukraine, the people are supporting uh, this pro Western future of the country. And the second quotation comes uh, uh, from, uh, I think, uh, late summer or maybe uh, autumn 2014. So this uh, mm -hmm. aggression in Donbass uh, is in, in that moment uh, very present. Everyone of us speaks just about, about this aggression. And, uh, and you get, every day you get some news, some messages about the, the population of the region who uh, supports the Russians and pro-Russians who block, for example, uh, the, the, the uh, movements, maneuver of, of uh, Ukrainian army and support the Russian army. 
And uh, you know, we are always in uh, inside of some uh, short situation. If you daily read about such things like like them, and uh, I'm, I'm sure it was uh, uh, really uh, a mass collective support of Russians in, in that cities which, which are occupied by now, in, in Donetsk, in Luhansk, in other cities. So I just uh, formulated uh, something with, with my um, absolutely uh, my seeing of that situation then at that moment and we speak about two uh, completely different moments, moments. Okay. Mm. Okay. yes please how would you uh, comment the situation right now how you can see the situation right now I'm sitting here. <coughs> yeah this is uh, since uh, since February uh, 2015, uh, uh, this is the uh, next uh, next stage of, uh, of of this situation in Donbass, and uh, we, we don't have uh, this uh, uh, military pressure uh, on that level as. Uh, in, in, in summer and uh, actually till the end of 2014 and you probably know that there was uh, some agreement signed in Minsk uh, which uh, <coughs> yeah, which is very very uh, sharply criticized in, in Ukraine but uh, it helped uh, to stop uh, escalation, military escalation of the conflict. So uh, we still have there some uh, line, like border line, linea uh, rozmezhuvanya. Mm -hmm. It is division like like line? a division border line. line. Yeah, it is like a term. But uh, if we speak about uh, mm, about some huge, uh, big military actions, uh, there is uh, there is uh, no action of of, of that level uh, since 2015. There is just uh, uh, sometimes the very very small local struggles in in the military groups uh, consisting of uh, five or ten people, and uh, we still get. Uh, probably each day we don't get it then, but but uh, uh, there are always the news about the next uh, soldier, next uh, officer who who has been killed in in such struggles. So this is not, of course, not the situation of peace. There is uh, no peaceful solution by now. But uh, if we speak, there is a war. Mm -hmm. There is not a kind of <coughs> frozen conflict. There is not a real war. But probably this is a war with very local and small episodes of it. Uh, actually, without uh, uh, using of, uh, of uh, tanks and. Uh, uh, aviation and, and uh, uh, different big arms, but it is still uh, in in process. Does it answer? And the uh, mm -hmm. uh, not actually, because I would love to hear what you think about the situation and if it's like how you can see uh, Ukraine in the future. Would would you like to see Ukraine as a part of European Union or? What, what's what's your point of view? What what do you think is the best uh, for Ukraine? Yes, I, I would like to see Ukraine uh, with the uh, European Union membership. Uh, I uh, I realize uh, that uh, <coughs> this this uh, aim, uh, this uh, perspective. Uh, was more visible 
uh, probably uh, 10 or 15 years ago, uh, paradoxically, but uh, I think after uh, Orange Revolution, which is actually my favorite event in Ukrainian history, uh, it was uh, 2004, it was uh, a fantastic time in, in Kiev uh, with a huge mass of very uh, friendly and beautiful people and in, in a very active color. And at that time we probably uh, were um, uh, somewhere much closer uh, to European Union as today. Uh, but uh, we have this hope, we still have it, and uh, maybe this is a time where uh, the romanticism uh, of this uh, European integration uh, became, uh, oh, romanticism is that, but uh, maybe some pragmatic things should be done and uh, uh, it is a, a long process. But I see this uh, situation in, uh, just in, in, in that uh, perspective, just uh, uh, with um, European Union. Uh, of course, if European Union uh, will uh, still exist in, uh, in, in, in that nearest future because uh, uh, this is not, not uh, the best uh, situation to promote it in, in Ukraine now, because um, Ukrainians uh, got much more experience uh, to communicate with the European Union, to be there, to see, uh, uh, to work there. And at the same time, uh, they are uh, uh, they see and they understand uh, many problems of, of this construction. Uh, so actually uh, the time after Orange Revolution was better for promoting uh, European idea. And if you ask me uh, how can I see uh, the future of, uh, of this uh, conflict, or, or let's say of war, how, how to stop it, how to solve it, uh, I don't have any answer. I just think uh, we have to be open, we as, as Ukrainian society, we have to be open uh, for some uh, huge and peaceful uh, work on that, and uh, I, I, I unfortunately mm, I, I don't see, I don't uh, read uh, some programs or some plans uh, concerning this region. I, I even don't know uh, what do the people think, the people who live there. Uh, my only proposal would be uh, to do some questionings, uh, to do, uh, to, to, to study, to, to discover uh, what is uh, the, the uh, opinion there, the public opinion. Uh, how many percent of people uh, would be uh, rather uh, together with Ukraine and uh, how many percent are against. And, uh, it is always very unstable uh, and nobody does it really sociological correct and, and uh, the situation is uh, quite chaotic. And our understanding of the situation is also very emotional. Um, just, just uh, one number I, I read about uh, two days ago, it was uh, just occasionally. Uh, there was in, in 2013 uh, maybe uh, five or six months before 
before Maidan. It was a time of uh, Yanukovych uh, presidential rule, and uh, there was some sociological questioning in uh, whole Ukraine, in all the regions of the country. Uh, the question was quite uh, complicated. Uh, I will try to uh, to translate it. So, are you uh, against uh, that Ukraine as a country will be together with Russia? But, uh, are you uh, supporting? Uh, was not in that in that question just uh, about how categorically uh, against. against and the number was actually uh, catastrophe uh, in in 2013 uh, there was just 37 percent of Ukrainian population who uh, didn't want uh, to be together with Russia in any case. It was the minority. What did together mean? What did they? Uh, as, uh, uh, Soviet Union, mm -hmm. oh, like new form of yeah. Geographically yeah. joint. Yeah, N not just geographically, but politically what first of all. And the same question, uh, and the same questioning in 2015 uh, showed uh, this this categorical against uh, reached. Uh, 67 percent so from 37 to 67 so I would say uh, the best uh, westernizer of Ukraine is Russian president Putin because this uh, uh, change uh, 30 percent higher uh, the people who are categorically against uh, uh, the common uh, state and, and common political life with Russia it was just that, first of all, it was a result of, of uh, this invasion and aggression. But again, back to, to Donbass, uh, I would like to see some results of uh, correct and good uh, questionings there. Uh, what do the people think about their future? We have a question. Uh, um, we also have war in cultural sphere, but if you think so, what do you think uh, the role of uh, writers and uh, your role? You see yourself as a soldier, a soldier in this <laughs> culture, <laughs> or um, you feel free to write uh, about what you want? Do you, do you feel this kind of obligation? No, it was my, uh, my worst uh, time in my life as I was a soldier. And I don't want to be a soldier again. Uh, so actually, uh, it was one of, of, uh, of my, uh, let's call it, uh, postulate uh, from the beginnings. Uh, I'm a writer because it is, uh, it is the form of being free. Especially uh, in my case, uh, it is just uh, uh, the best uh, part of this complex being a writer. If we consider uh, this uh, mm, situation, then the, the best, the, the most uh, important and really uh, the sweetest part of being a writer is being free. And uh, if the writers have some obligations, then uh, probably uh, to, uh, to, to, uh, to export this freedom. Uh, to, to give it to the, to the others in a, in a way of some poetic line or uh, some page of prose uh, and uh, 
uh, I, I would say nobody is a soldier in, in uh, today's Ukrainian literature. Uh, the different thing is, uh, is the activity. Just activity, for example, uh, the readings uh, in, in, in the regions uh, where, uh, where the war and the border is very close and uh, to to take part at some events uh, some uh, poetic performances for example uh, and then it is for the soldiers too they uh, attend uh, such events and uh, it is a kind of I would say it is a kind of, of uh, uh, mission for many uh, Ukrainian artists and, and especially for writers to visit uh, these territories uh, in the very east uh, of the country and uh, to find there um, some new audience, uh, new acquaintances and new friends. And uh, I hope very much that uh, uh, my next tour uh, it will be in uh, uh, in the second half of March, in in one month actually. Uh, we with with my uh, friends, artists and musicians, uh, we go to some uh, make some Eastern line, uh, starting in in Tanya's Kharkiv, but then we go to Starobilsk, and then uh, then our route uh, will be like. Uh, Parallel <coughs> to this uh, uh, limitation uh, line, so it will be uh, Bakhmut, uh, Severodonetsk, uh, Slovyansk, and then uh, uh, we finish in Mariupol. Um, so it is. Uh, I, I I think we um, uh, we can speak about uh, uh, this. Uh, cultural mission uh, very pathetically uh, but maybe let's uh, let's do something there just uh, showing our uh, performances and presentations and, and uh, speaking with uh, uh, with the people from from that regions mm -hmm. yeah. uh, there are there are some questions okay <laughs> but, uh, can you say something about the conditions for writers in Ukraine? Because I know uh, Ukraine's also had uh, problems with censorship, like you know, they wanted to close the social media and things like that. And do you uh, do you also feel that your use of satire or humor is a way to get around the issues of the censorship? Uh, 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 I would like. Uh, somehow to somehow to divide uh, this problem of uh, mm, censorship in today's Ukraine. Uh, I would say there is no kind of, of such invasion uh, of uh, censorship if we speak about uh, strict literature of art. And, uh, you, you can prepare um, any performance uh, in theater. You, you can publish uh, each text you have written as a book, but there is a uh, huge pressure uh, and, uh, and many and many barriers uh, for the publications uh, which can be um, can be qualified as, as a journalist. If there is something uh, which touches some concrete politician and uh, his business and uh, the shadows of this business, and if there is uh, this kind of uh, discoveries, of journalist discoveries, so they are in danger. And uh, I wouldn't say this is a censorship. How to call it? This is uh, just uh, uh, if we have uh, oligarchy as a 
uh, system of the country, then uh, you can criticize some oligarch uh, on the TV channel where the owner is another oligarch. So you have this freedom of critics, but uh, in the frame of this TV channel. If you go uh, to the other TV channel, you can criticize somebody, but not the owner and the group uh, which uh, owns and dictates on that TV channel. So this is a, I would say this is a freedom of speech uh, which is fragmented. But closing social media is by definition as uh, uh, everyone. So, so uh, do you think art is a way of, of getting around that? Uh, this is, I think, this is uh, another question. This is about just about uh, the kind of of uh, the very high uh, tension uh, of uh, communication in in social networks. I mean, of course, uh, you can be very very sharply criticized by uh, by the people who uh, don't agree with you. And this is a, uh, always a struggle, and uh, especially uh, in this traumatized society, uh, where everyone uh, is always ready, somehow has a, a maximal readiness to feel being insulted, <laughs> uh, and and uh, and uh, to feel the pain. Uh, but I wouldn't call it censorship. This is uh, uh, this is a form of discussion, which is quite cruel and quite sh which is sharper than each discussion should be, uh, with uh, uh, human conflicts. The people uh, stop being friends. They just uh, we have a very. Uh, very funny Ukrainian uh, verb uh, for this uh, word "ros yeah, uh, mm, Yeah. Well, what I think you were referring to was the uh, censorship of the contacte, which. Um, yeah. Perhaps, but, but I think that is what you are, it's just a Russian social network. Contact you. Contact you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, it's just, uh, I would say just economical uh, sanction. Contact is a big business. And if uh, we block uh, some Russian uh, economical projects, then we have to remember that Contacti costs uh, the billions of dollars and brings them. And uh, if, we, uh, if we agree uh, it is uh, closed uh, in Ukraine, then I wouldn't say it is uh, because of censorship. It, it is one of the, of, of, uh, of the forms for sanctions. I can add to it that it wasn't a censorship, it was, uh, it was a matter of national security. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, because of recent Russian cyber attacks, uh, Ukraine had to battle not, not forever, but just for a few years, some Russian um, internet services. It was a matter of national security, not yeah. censorship. That and Yandex as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would like to ask you one question um, that I usually ask many of my the Ukrainians that I meet, and that is how to define Ukraine, because we're often presented with this two-region model in Norwegian media, a pro-East, pro-Russian, Eastern Orthodox, Russian-speaking East, and its Ukrainian nationalist. Um, pro-European West. 
But I've just returned from Ukraine after living there in Kyiv for five years. Mm -hmm. And I have a completely different picture of Ukraine as a very multinational and uh, mul multilingual country. And I feel like this is one of the richness of Ukraine that people, almost every person could speak or at least understand uh, at least two languages. Um, I've seen this in Kyiv, mm -hmm. uh, but also in Lviv and Chernivtsi, Kamenets-Podilsky, mm -hmm. uh, but also in Kharkiv and Odessa, not in Crimea, by the way. But how do we define Ukraine? And how do we define Ukraine as uh, a unit or uh, what is uniting Ukraine as, as, a, as a country? And how is this... Uh, pluralism affecting this national unity in Ukraine? Mm -hmm. That's actually the question I, I try to answer <laughs> during all my life. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Writing my first, uh, very first essays published now uh, in English translation in that book. Uh, so I, I cannot formulate you uh, all that things in, in some five or six sentences mm -hmm. uh, because uh, I also change some positions mm -hmm. and uh, it is uh, just too complicated to find for Ukraine some formula or some slogan mm -hmm. and uh, it was uh, uh, a kind of obsession uh, in the late 90s if I remember it correctly, uh, one of the, of the uh, complexes, hardest complexes of many people, uh, they say how to find uh, some national idea for the country. And I don't think we need some idea, national idea. What does it mean, actually? If so, then maybe, okay, uh, let's say it is a uh, uh, European perspective which can unite all the regions, because all the people everywhere in Ukraine think about Europe positively. They, they think it is, uh, it is a better life. But uh, it is, again, it, it is somehow too strange for some national idea to, uh, to have this kind of, uh, of Svitly uh, Majbutnie, like uh, communism was Future. in the Soviet time. Uh, yeah. And uh, I think it's just uh, just a process. I started uh, uh, writing about those things in, in as I said, in, in 92, 93. It was a very young, very new country. And I tried somehow to define these differences. And uh, I wrote a lot of, of bullshit at that time about the <laughs> Eastern Ukrainian uh, cities. And uh, you quoted uh, from my Erzherzberts, I think. But at the same time, it was, it was my uh, uh, autonomous attempt uh, somehow to ponder it. And um, I, I just uh, see. Mm, that uh, we have some dynamics. We have now. We are now in 2018. So, as my personal experience, I can say uh, I am in that uh, dynamics uh, since 91, 92. Uh, how many years it is? Uh, it is 27, 26. Mm -hmm. As old Almost as 30. as uh, Ukraine. Mm -hmm independent is and, mm, uh, and I think this is a, a correct way is to feel uh, this process uh, uh, it, it, it changes so I mean a, a pro uh, Russian is uh, with the Russian orthodoxy or something is very much exaggerated and it is not uh, the core of the problem for the Eastern Ukraine because the core is the uh, oligarchy and oligarchic system of economics. Uh, the people are still 
connected to this uh, big uh, uh, industry, which is dying actually. And pro Western West, uh, it's not true. And uh, they are uh, as orthodox as the Eastern Ukrainians, but they are geographically they are much closer to uh, to European countries from Eastern Bloc. And, and so there is a, a huge complex of uh, different details, and you cannot uh, somehow solve it by uh, by a formula or some. Uh, short formulation uh, because you, you have just uh, uh, just consider just uh, perceive this process and uh, you have to uh, compare I can compare my first visits uh, to Kharkiv mm -hmm. my very first visit was in 94 and uh, and again uh, it is like uh, communication with uh, two different societies. So I, I had then I had my uh, somehow my my uh, superstition idea. Uh, stereotype, maybe? stereotype uh, about what this uh, big industrial city in Ukraine is is. But, uh, it was it was partly uh, it was confirmed by the reality I, I felt in, in 94, but at the same time uh, I was very surprised uh, meeting there so many people uh, who were just uh, completely uh, included uh, in, into Ukrainians, Ukrainian literature, the students who visited these readings. Uh, and I can compare with, uh, with Kharkiv today. And I, I see this is a tendency which uh, which is wider and wider and wider. And uh, uh, I just had this episode with Serhi Jadan. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a participant of the meeting you uh, mentioned today, and uh, it was in April uh, 2017. Yeah, last year. Uh, exactly uh, the same day uh, as uh, European Commission uh, accepted this bezvizový uh, regime uh, for Ukraine visa and free, yeah. uh, uh, visa free regime, uh, and uh, we with Serhi, he is a poet and, and uh, uh, novelist. Uh, from Kharkiv and I'm from Western Ukraine and we had a big uh, meeting in uh, Velika Chimichna Auditoria, a uh, big uh, chemical uh, aula in uh, uh, at the Kharkiv University which was full of, of people and uh, the mood was very enthusiastic uh, about this decision of European Commission and uh, all of them were very happy, and we discussed uh, where is Central Eastern Europe today. That is actually the center of Europe. And uh, it was uh, unthinkable uh, to formulate this question in Kharkiv in 94. Mm. The people could react at that time mm, as for some, uh, some crazy question. And uh, 2017, it was our common conclusion at the end of discussion, the very center of Europe is now in Kharkiv. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there was a huge applause. <laughs> and uh, so the, 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 the things change. And um, it's just enough uh, to, uh, to live, to be in that process. You know, we still have an evening ahead of some um, less formal communication in Ukrainian. So I'm thinking, shall we take some last questions or s take a break and switch to Ukrainian and talk over coffee? What would be the preference? Ira, you were really wanting to... Am I the only one with the questions? <laughs> no, 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 there are, there are hands around. There are hands around, but... 
Uh, why don't we take, um, if you guys don't mind, Ira's question, take a little break and switch to Ukrainian and... <laughs> okay, I will do uh, I have two. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Uh, well, I was wondering, um, in recent years, there has been an increase in interest to Ukraine from the West, and uh, increased attention. And how you as a writer uh, feel, um, is that uh, um, now, because it seems that, that uh, there not have not been uh, such a dramatic rise in translations of uh, literature, uh, of Ukrainian literature into English or other languages. Uh, what do you feel as a writer? What should be, or, and a, a kind of, uh, you have been working a lot with uh, promoting Ukraine abroad. Uh, what should be done from the state or from the from the civil society to to boost uh, translations? And the second question is a bit personal: is that your daughter is a quite successful, very successful writer in Ukraine, and uh, having a father which, uh, who is a patriarch of Ukrainian literature, it must be very challenging. <laughs> but do you compete? I want to know that. Uh, I start here. <laughs> <laughs> Second uh, question. Mm, yeah, actually, I'm very happy uh, as a father uh, to be one of the first readers of uh, new texts written by my daughter. Uh, I, I probably shouldn't say it, but I think she's a very good, she's a brilliant writer. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> uh, I, I never mm, try uh, to, to, uh, to, to uh, suggest something uh, because uh, that's, uh, suggest something that, uh, that she has to change that and that and that because I, I don't think I am uh, greater than her and uh, she's just a colleague and uh, okay she's as good as me <laughs> uh, but uh, as I said I, I'm happy to be one of the first readers uh, we are maybe three or four people so her husband who is uh, a very good writer too <laughs> and, and uh, then probably me and uh, her mother uh, and uh, so I, I never read it uh, as a book. I know her texts uh, just uh, from my monitor because I read it as uh, a text in computer, as ma manuscript, let's call it manuscript. Uh, and so uh, actually uh, I astonish. I'm astonished by different uh, ideas, solutions by, by her uh, uh, power of, of um, imagining power. Uh, but there, there is one point uh, I always... Uh, I shouldn't say it again. Uh, uh, at the end, by the end of, of each uh, her novel, uh, as I am on the last pages of, of the text, uh, I really uh, want to cry. <laughs> and she's, she's n absolutely not sentimental. She do doesn't write sentimental. Uh, I don't know how to explain this uh, uh, very, very special thing, but uh, mm, it is in that way. So I, I'm just happy mm, that uh, she works and writes. And about promoting, uh, I always uh, had a feeling that, um, mm, of course, Ukrainian state machine, it is awful. It is uh, something which, uh, uh, to be honest, uh, one should completely destroy and then uh, build from, from the beginnings, from the first mechanisms. But uh, it exists. At, 
it should help in, in that case with uh, uh, translating, uh, with promoting of uh, Ukrainian literature uh, by costs, by financial things like uh, mm, some stipends and grants in Ukraine uh, for the people from abroad who will do it, who are interested to come uh, uh, to Ukraine, let's say, for, uh, for a few years uh, to live there uh, with the money uh, from Ukrainian state or for some uh, independent foundation that supported uh, by the state too and just to, 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 to come closer uh, to maybe to fall in love with, uh, with that country, with language, with uh, regions, with this uh, multiculturalism. And uh, it, it would be the best way, I think, to have uh, in, in each language uh, just two or three uh, good translators uh, who can do a lot. Uh, we can see it uh, in the case of uh, uh, German-speaking countries. Uh, we, we don't have many translators into German, but we still have three or four of them, which is for uh, Ukrainian literature, uh, it means to have many. <laughs> uh, and it is uh, always quite successful uh, to come with presentation to, to Germany or Austria or Switzerland because uh, the translations are very good. They, they, they are convincing. They, they are made uh, congenial. Uh, they are congenial. Congenials. <laughs> and uh, there are still uh, the countries uh, where uh, nobody can translate directly from Ukrainian language. Uh, I had a situation in, in my own career with uh, uh, huge interest uh, in, um, in Holland. Uh, it was a very uh, uh, famous uh, Dutch publisher, but he couldn't find somebody who can work with Ukrainian language. And a very interesting way uh, was uh, uh, made by by Spanish publisher. Uh, mm, he mm, invited some Ukrainians living in Spain uh, to do some first version of translation, and then. Uh, they worked with good uh, Spanish native speakers uh, who were mm, who are known as a very good stylists of uh, contemporary uh, Spanish. And my only scene against him was that uh, that he was a Catalan, actually, <laughs> the publisher, and uh, he, he doesn't live anymore, but. He was uh, brilliant, and, and he asked me, would I prefer to have my book in Spanish or in Catalan? Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, uh, like somebody who is asked, uh, do you prefer to have your books in Russian or in Ukrainian? <laughs> and uh, of course I said, oh, in Spanish, in Spanish. <laughs> I, I don't need, I, actually it would be nice to have the book in Catalan, but if there is uh, this uh, just a choice, alternative, then in Spanish. And uh, yeah, he, he was a little bit sad. <laughs> <laughs> we actually, you know, we declared this um, formal or English session until six, and we, so we still have five minutes for another question, unless Arve, what do you think? <laughs> And there is a question. Yes. And there was actually, um, oh. in that case, we have two because there was, yes, you were. I was trying to come to you were, yes. <laughs> uh, I just want to ask you how would you describe um, the place where is Ukraine now? 
except for that it is in the process. Mm -hmm. But what is the place? Where yeah. is this place? You, you mean um, in, in some, uh, probably some uh, historic moment? Or, or you mean uh, rather no, geography? No, no. <laughs> Maybe the crossing, the, the, the place where the geography meets history, or Not really geographic. today's life. Not really geographically, but there is some kind of process and development, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. the evolvement mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. So, where is Ukraine? What is mm -hmm. this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, uh, uh, this is the country which, uh, which feels being still one of the post-Soviet countries and I, I cannot uh, evaluate it without uh, any um, uh, historic connotation. So uh, this uh, understanding of our world as something which is a part of, of the same post-Soviet space, but at the same time uh, there is a very strong opinion uh, of uh, uh, some uh, process, some way going to, going to something which is different than being post-Soviet. And uh, in, in uh, in a clear meaning, uh, it is said Europe. So Europe as a word uh, is very much and very often used uh, in, in Ukrainian society, not, not uh, just by intellectuals. Uh, the people who, uh, I don't know, who are going to, as, as gastarbeiters, are going to uh, to Poland or uh, to, to uh, Czech Republic, uh, they repeat all the time Europe, 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 Europe. So it is a kind of, uh, I don't know, religion of, or, or maybe mythology, uh, but it is in that way. So in that meaning we are in Europe, because uh, uh, as the human beings uh, we are what we imagine not what we are in reality. <laughs> or maybe uh, if we imagine our reality enough strong and uh, with uh, enough hope, uh, then probably we create some uh, other reality. I suspect I, I was too philosophical. <laughs> <laughs> Could have been more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I would like to uh, ask you for a for a short comment. Um, if I'm not mistaken, in 2013, you uh, you've written um, you wrote a column at uh, TAS and UA about uh, the appearance of National Geographic Ukrainian edition. And that was your column from which I've learned about that grand event because um, it was something that should have happened mm -hmm. at, at last. Um, if I'm not mistaken, in 2015 uh, they stopped publishing yeah, they that, closed. that job, yeah. they closed. Um, at the same time, we still have Russian, uh, Ukrainian edition of Vakruk Sveta. Russian, in Russian, mm -hmm. and plenty of magazines that are simply like at the new Lisa, mm -hmm. that are simply nothing but a waste of natural resources. And we still have horoscopes and those yeah. sites where you can find press. You still have a lot of materials that are not worthwhile. Mm -hmm. How or why has it happened that Ukrainian society has not created a demand for such a grand journal, but is still it is still creating a demand for Russian-speaking similar journals. Um, I don't know. When, whenever I think about that, 
Um, it, it reminds me the words of Winston Churchill, what are our troops, are, what then yeah. our troops are fighting for in the East? I don't know, perhaps... I'm not sure he, uh, he really said these words, but, uh, but there is some legend about... It's about the budget of um, culture. Yeah. <coughs> Such project uh, as uh, you have mentioned, uh, National Geographic in Ukraine, uh, needs uh, to, to, to be developed and to live, uh, needs uh, some constant support uh, of, of readers, of fans, of, uh, of the people who uh, who can pay for that. And this is one of the signs uh, of the problem which is still open in Ukraine. Uh, we actually, we don't have this middle class. It's people who, um, yes, who, who have enough money to pay for National Geographic, for example. Yeah. And uh, uh, the magazines you mentioned, uh, like Odokhni, they are, first of all, they are cheap. They are very cheap because of uh, huge uh, circulation, which makes uh, each kind of uh, production, of printed production, uh, much cheaper. So, I mean, the bigger is the number of copies you print, the cheaper is, uh, you know, and and this is uh, absolutely mm, uh, economics. What you ask, um, it is a sign of of. Uh, uh, I, I repeat this uh, damned word oligarchy. But at the same time, like the, the, the people who are very rich and they are very few, and then you don't see uh, some middle class in, in, a, in a good number which can support <coughs> such things, right? Yeah. Perhaps Odukhni was not a very right example. What about Bakruk Sviatek in Ukrainian edition cost practically the same than cosmopolitan, um, than traveling, uh, mag magazines mm. about traveling that are of the same price category? Yeah. That those are still on the market, but that one is gone. Okay, I think uh, they probably are sold uh, as bad as National Geographic, <laughs> but, uh, but Russia can sponsor them. This is just the uh, only explanation. But I don't see uh, such magazines in, in each uh, kiosk or everywhere in Ukraine. I don't see. I, you probably see them somewhere. At some places, you cannot say Vokruk Svet, you can see Vokruk Svet uh, everywhere in Ukraine. It, it was uh, new for me uh, that it is so popular. It's still, I could see that in Czech you, you can just see, of course, it is present, probably, yeah, but uh, I, I don't think it is uh, uh, economically successful. Just uh, Russian. Vydatki, um, izdzierżki. Expenses. Expenses, yeah. Yeah. They pay for TV channel Russia Today, they can pay uh, 500 million uh, dollars per year. So, the Kruk Svieta is a very small drop in that campaign. What do you think, Shall we take a break and come back to Spilkovatis? Yes, <laughs> Thank you. Можем ми запропонуємо їм у вас як 